Hey y'all, so here is our next recipe. This one is a casserole. It's a chicken and rice casserole. So we're going to get started. You're going to need one 12.5 ounce can of chicken. You can probably put more. You can get away with putting more in here if you wanted to, but I just went with one can. Okay, and then we're going to literally add all of our ingredients in here together. So, we need a can of cream and chicken soup. We need our rice, which is only supposed to be two cups. So let's see if I can eyeball this. There we go. It's about two cups. I didn't want to overdo it. Maybe just a smidge either. Okay. Um, calls for eight ounces of sour cream. I felt like that was a little much. So we're gonna see how far we can get with just mm, about two thirds of a container. You're gonna need a cup of cheddar and that's shredded. And you're going to need about a half a cup of chopped bacon. We're gonna use real bacon bits just to save time. Put a little more in there. Okay. A couple of tablespoons of ranch dressing mix. You will not need the whole packet if you're going to use the packet. Probably about half. Stir that up. need about a half a cup of chicken broth so that your rice doesn't dry out now usually we we'll go ahead and cook this rice ahead of time and that is what the recipe calls for you can use minute rice I just used regular parboiled rice that I had okay and I'm gonna pepper this and salt it and I'm just gonna put, hmm, we're gonna put a little bit of onion in it. Onion powder. It's not in the recipe, but I'm just gonna add a little bit. And a little bit of garlic powder. This is also not in the recipe. So probably about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and about, yeah, about a half a teaspoon of onion powder. Okay. You need a nine by 13 dish, greased and ready to go. And stick this in a preheated oven, 350, for about 25 minutes. To me, it's already got enough sour cream in it that we don't need to put more. So I'm going to spray this really quick and we're going to get it in the oven and cook it and then I'll see you back here in just a little while with the finished product. Okay y'all so this is the end product. Um, it will look a little sleepy when you take it out of the oven so just let it sit and it should absorb some of the liquid. I'm not really quite sure why it does that, but um, it ended up being creamy and fine after just about 10 minutes of letting it cool. So we need to move on to our next chicken recipe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we're gonna work on a, another stuffed shells recipe. This one is with canned chicken. You can of course use any type of chicken that you would like. But we're gonna use canned chicken today and you're gonna need about one and a half cans of the 12 ounce size. So you'll need one whole 12.5 ounce can and then half of another. And we're gonna go ahead and get started with our filling. Um, instead of ricotta cheese, I'm going to use cottage cheese and I need about 15 ounces 
that, which is almost this whole container, almost half of this container. Okay. And we're gonna need an egg. Half a cup of parm cheese, shredded. A teaspoon of oregano. And a teaspoon of basil. Okay. You don't have to be exactly dead on in those measurements, but you need to be pretty close. All right, we're gonna stir this up. And I've already cooked my jumbo shells. I've already got those cooked to al dente and drained, and they're waiting. And we're gonna fill them up with this mixture. All right. And we're gonna go ahead and add our chicken. One and a half cans worth of the 12 and a half ounce size. Remember that. Because you have a smaller size and you have the bigger size. And this is going to be super simple. Okay. So just combine those. Now, the jumbo shells come in a 12 ounce box. I did not cook the whole 12 ounce box because every single time I do, I run out of filling. So, I cooked all but like a couple of ounces. Hold on just one second, let me get this pan ready to go. Okay. All right, let's move this over. Spray your pan, get it ready to go. And it's time for us to get started, at least on this portion. Okay, so all you're gonna do now is just set to work stuffing these and I'm not gonna show y'all the entire pan being stuffed. But like I said, I've only made about I'd say only nine ounce, nine ounces worth of the shells. You can do however you want, but I just, I just didn't cook as much. These are really hot. But we're gonna get it done. Ooh. And they didn't want to stay together this time, so I'm not sure what happened there. So we're just gonna do the best we can. And no one's gonna notice, right? Okay, let's squeeze this in here. All right, I'll show y'all just a few more, and then I will come right back so we can do our next step. I just wonder if it's possible to get a bad batch of pasta. All right, y'all, I'll be right back in a minute with this completely filled. Okay, y'all, so I am ready to go. Um, I forgot to tell you, because I always forget to spread a little bit of your sauce on the bottom of the pan, just like you would with lasagna or anything like that. So, I've already done that. Um, the next thing that I need to do is spread out the Alfredo sauce. And I'm using Rayo's Alfredo sauce. We do not like jarred Alfredo sauce. So, I'm hoping this will taste different than other ones that we've had. We just did not like it. So, hoping, hoping, hoping this will be different. Try to spread this out just a little bit because it's not a very big jar, it's like 15 ounce. Okay, and you're gonna put this on a 350 degree oven, a 
until it's heated through, so about half an hour or so. Um, take your remaining parm cheese and sprinkle on, and then you need, and then you need about a cup of mozzarella. I'll do a little extra, but a cup will be fine. Okay. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna cook this about 20 to 30 minutes covered, and then in the last 10 minutes, we're gonna take the foil off, and then that way um, the cheese can melt properly. So just keep that in mind, 20 to 30 um, covered, and then the last 10 minutes or so uncovered. And just keep an eye on it because it will burn. All right, I'll see you back here in a few. Okay, y'all, so this is the finished product. It has sit here for about 10 minutes. Um, cool and all um it did great and i'm sure it's gonna taste good hopefully we're gonna test this alfredo sauce so i can see normally i make my own um and then i got to thinking i should have tried ragu ragu makes one so or so i heard so um maybe next time if i don't like this one um but the finished product i'm sure it'll be fine at least for tonight and it was something simple that I can make with canned chicken. It didn't require the extra cooking the chicken breast and chopping them up and you know, all the things. So, hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to work on a four can Mexican chicken casserole, but we're gonna use some canned chicken for that. And this is really, really simple. Um, just preheat your oven to 375 and get you a medium, I wouldn't say 13 by nine baking dish ready. You could use that, but you could actually use a little bit smaller, like a two quart. Um, and so let's go ahead and just get started. This is literally a, almost a dump and go kind of recipe. You're going to need one and a half cans of canned chicken. Um, I'm gonna use this other half for another recipe. Set this aside. Um, I'm gonna try to kind of chop it just a little bit so it's not big chunks. Okay. You're going to need to go ahead and start to gather everything. Let me see. I'm gonna need two cups of cooked rice. You can use any type of rice you prefer, or even quinoa if you wanted to. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the rice that I just cooked. So it's basically a Mexican chicken and rice. You're going to need a whole can of diced tomatoes, not drained, a whole can of corn, drained, whole can of green chilies, not drained, and you need a cup You're gonna need a cup of this type, oops, of taco sauce, okay? It could be Old El Paso or whatever brand, but I was prepared to use some picante sauce or salsa. If I couldn't find it, I think it'll still be fine, okay? All right, so we're gonna stir all this together. And right now you're going to add half of your cheese. So you only need a cup. So you're only going to need about a half a cup mixed in. And then the rest of it will go on top. And that's it. We're done. We just have to get our prepared pan. That's where 
And I'm so proud of this little dish. This was my mama's. And it's a little blue corn flour, I think. Corningware. So we're gonna try to fit all this in here. Okay. I'm hoping it's gonna fit. I think it will. You usually can tell. I think it's gonna come really close, but I think we can get it to work. Because this is literally all we have to do. The only taco seasoning this really has is from the taco sauce. So, hopefully it's good. I'm gonna put a little salt and pepper on top before we finish this out. Okay. All right, so you'll bake this uncovered until it's heated through, so it shouldn't take long at all, 20 minutes to half hour. Um, I'll put some cheese on top. And keep in mind that your cheese can get burned, so you may have to tint it with foil. But that's it. 20, 30 minutes on 375 degree oven. And then I'll be back here in a little while to show you how it turned out. Okay, y'all, so this is the finished product. Um, it did fit perfectly in this pan. I didn't have any problems with it um, overheating or boiling over. It did fine. It smells great. Um, it's a perfect dump and go type recipe for the canned chicken. And even if it wasn't, it would still be a dump and go that would be just real simple and easy. And I may try it next time with ground beef. Okay, y'all, make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. I wish I could talk when the sound is so loud I wish, oh I wish I wish I could